For the longest time, I thought stock market was the gambling and I shouldn't invest. The stock market goes, so goes the wealth of the American economy. So I spent almost uh, eight to nine years of my adult life not investing in stock market. But eventually, when I started, I set some ground rules for myself. I said, I'm not going to gamble, but let me make sure that I make the most informed decisions. Let me start small, just like I tell about startups, right? Think big, start small, grow slow, then grow fast. I use the same principle for investing in the stock market. I started with as low as 500 rupees just to see what it's like uh, to buy a stock and see the price go up and, and or go down and, and what happens. So I played with very small amounts of money, 5,000, 10,000, you know, for, for around three to six months, just absorbing what is going on. Over the last three years, I'm very happy to say I've done well. So uh, here are some tips for you. When, if you are getting in the stock market, uh, investing, some things that have worked well for me. Number one, invest in companies that you know and you like. For example, the bank that you bank at. If you bank at X bank, uh, you know, you know you like it or not. I have multiple bank accounts and I decided the one that gives me the best experience, I'll buy in it. And trust me when I say it, uh, in one year, I have tripled uh, the amount of money that I invested in, in that particular bank. And the bank that I don't like you know, uh, banking with, the, the behavior isn't the best, the technology isn't the best. I still invested in that bank and it didn't give me as much of a result. So the point is companies that are doing well and you have a feel good factor about it and your research supports what you personally feel, validates what your personal perception of that company is, go for it. Number two, you need to learn to be a futurist when investing in the stock market. Here's an example I'll tell you from my life. I was traveling a lot uh, before pandemic and at that time, a year and a half or two years ago, uh, the, the, the automobile industry in India wasn't doing so well. And everybody was like, oh, the prime minister sucks and government sucks and blah, 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 automobile is doing so bad. And I happened to be in Coimbatore for a speech and Coimbatore has uh, some uh, you know, automobile parts manufacturing companies and I, I heard there are some engineers from automobile uh, engineering and I asked them, hey, what's happening with the automobile industry? Why is it not doing so well? I heard a lot of people are getting fired. Uh, what's the future? What does it look like? And these guys told me, sir, it's actually not so bad as they say because uh, the people who are getting fired are, are the older folks and they're actually hiring more uh, people uh, for the electric cars that they're going to come up with. Every automobile brand is going to come up with electric cars in the next, you know, uh, one to two years. And, and there's going to be a boom again. As soon as I heard that, I started buying, uh, rather, I started doing research, actually, to see who is the most probable candidate for the best and the most effective electric car that would work in Indian roads. And for me, it was Tata Motors. I bought quite a few shares of Tata Motors and I'm so proud to say it has more than doubled uh, in, in price and uh, I have made a, a good profit out of it. So to invest in stocks, you've got to be a futurist. You've got to talk to people, you've got to talk to the industry, you've got to listen to uh, the policy makers and make your decision predict what happens in the next two to three years how would it impact right another example to, just to give it to you um, tips music right so as the pandemic uh, kicked in I realized people are going to be homebound that means they are going to want to entertain themselves more and companies that do well in entertainment will uh, uh, give a nice return on investment and so of course geo being geo reliance uh, was defin a definite choice Tips music was a definite choice and a few other investments I made. Again, uh, some of them have actually given me seven times 
return on investment. That means 700% profit, right? Just having that ability to predict because when the masses are scared, you being the intelligent person that you are, you need to know that's the time to know about the future, but what these masses would do in the future and based on that predict what would grow in the future and invest in that. So be a futurist. Number three is be careful uh, when you read on uh, various websites that this stock has grown 10 times, 100 times, whatever, right? Uh, and such and such stock, you know, uh, celebrity has invested in this. Know that that price has come to its peak and it might not go up further. And everybody else would be buying it because they saw it. Most people are actually not very intelligent when it comes to investing in stocks. So most people are going to read those articles and buy it further, maybe increasing the price a little bit, but not much. In fact, because of all the hype and all, eventually it will correct itself, which means the price will come down. So if you buy it at that peak price, you will eventually lose money. You can lose money. Of course, if you wait long enough, it might again pick up. But the point is, if you listen to these blogs and everything else and invest when the price is at its peak, you're actually making a wrong decision. If you want to be a good investor, always look for those uh, difficult times, right? The demonetization happened or the coronavirus happened or the second wave happened or whatever, you know, economic crisis, uh, hung government or whatever the problem is or there's in the uh, uh, China, you know, something is happening there. Anytime there is fear, the stock market kind of goes down and that's when it's time for you and me, smart people, to uh, invest in these stocks because you know, that problem goes away and it will pick up. Bhagavad Gita says, right? Just like changing seasons, happiness and distress, they're always changing. You know, when it's winter, summer is coming. When there is summer, winter is coming. So similarly, when there are difficult times, when there are recessions, when there are problems, know for a fact good times are coming. So during problems, have enough liquidity to buy enough stocks so that you can enjoy. When, it, when things get better, you make money. Number four, diversify. Make sure you're not investing in one sector only or one stock only. You should be divested across sectors, across stocks. So for example, there's agriculture, there's pharmacy, there is jewelry, there is automobiles, etc., etc. right? So make sure you're divested across various sectors. So in case one sector goes down, a couple other sectors might actually pick you up and on average, you will be still profitable. Um, I learned this actually at a casino. Now I don't gamble myself, but a friend of mine almost forced me into a casino in Vietnam. And as he was playing with the roulette, you know, he was making small bets and divesting that way. And he taught me, well, look, this is how you hedge. This is how, this is a life lesson actually, that you don't put all your eggs in one basket, you divest them, you, you spread your risks so that your risk profile goes down. So you're not risking everything in one thing, you're risking it in multiple places and you, you know, chances are by the probability, by statistics, that some won't do well and some will do well. Versus if you're focusing on only one thing, it's kind of like a heads or tails, you know, 50% chance of it failing, 50% chance of it actually working out. So, so best to divest into multiple fields, multiple sectors, multiple stocks, so that you have a lower risk profile. And even if something goes bad in one sector, you on, over, on average will still be uh, doing well for yourself. Number five, the last one I'll tell you is don't gamble. Definitely as a new investor in the stock market, don't do trading or intraday trading, etc because that requires a lot of skill, a lot of technical knowledge. And at the initial stage, that not, might not be a good idea. I don't trade at all. I just invest and forget. Every month I have a schedule, I'll put an X amount of money, I'll invest and I forget. And I know for a fact, because as time goes by, if I've invested in good companies that don't go down the drain, they will eventually pick up speed and grow my money, 
right? It's a long-term game, it's a game of patience. And especially all of you who watch my videos, I know you're mostly entrepreneurs. So treat it as another source of revenue. You know, as you're building your startup and paying yourself a meager salary, make sure part of that salary goes into uh, uh, the stock market, you know, investing in the stock market so that, you know, in case there is need, this is something uh, of substance some substantial amount of money over a period of time that's growing faster than your bank account and perhaps sometimes faster than your startup uh, where you can depend on. So treat it as an, a, a, an end source of income rather than your uh, sole goal motivation. You know, if you find yourself 9.15 in the morning looking at the stock market and going nuts over it, dreaming over it, know for a fact you're addicted and you might be prone to gambling and it's dangerous because what happens is when you're emotional you make stupid decisions when you're overwhelmed you make stupid decisions you know why because the front part of the brain you know what makes us what's there special about humans is is that front part of the brain the frontal brain is a cognitive brain it shuts down when there is when you're overwhelmed with stress when you're overwhelmed with addiction when you're overwhelmed uh, uh, in any way or form so you don't make the right rational decisions your brain cannot think in its fullest capacity so control your emotions be grounded don't get addicted and follow the steps i told you and trust me at least the first six months these steps will help you and eventually you'll figure out your own path and you'll probably do much better than i'm doing but treat it as a source of revenue for you as you're building your startup building your life or perhaps even uh, earning a salary this is just one thing this is not your life so thereby uh, put that much energy and uh, have fun